Beautiful. So welcome today for this great Sunday. And uh, let me see how, how do we start, how do we get into it. Just a second. So let's pray. So dear God, oh, we are here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for your call that you called us into fellowship with your dear son. Thank you. We are learning about you in the world and also in life, in, in the practicalities of life. Thank you, God. You are so faithful. Bless this time in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so uh, today is this uh, uh, a special day on a calendar. Maybe you've noticed, you know, people uh, put uh, little hearts everywhere and, and people are buying flowers and they celebrate uh, St. Valentine. You know, Valentine's Day, they call it a uh, day of people in love, you know, uh, and also, it's a, a international day of marriage, you know, uh, Saint Valentine. So basically, in in many places, in many churches, they speak about relationships these days. Uh, they speak about uh, marriages, and uh, and so on. So, who was the Saint Valentine? You know. Uh, just very simply, uh, he was a priest of past, and he was marrying people uh, against the decree of a pope, because there was a war, and pope didn't want people to get married, because the married man doesn't want to go to war. I think even single man <laughs> doesn't want to go to war, but but of course he has a responsibility. You know, he has a wife, he has children, uh, so uh, this. Saint Valentine was marrying people even against the decree of the church and you know he became a uh, saint you know venerated by people well I hope he was saved I don't know uh, let's believe he was and let's just remember that a lot of those people that are called saints by people you know, will end up in hell. I'll say it again. A lot of those people that are called saints by people, they will end up in hell. But all of those that God calls saints, they will end up in heaven. That's the difference, you know. We don't need uh, recognition of people. You know, we don't need people to come to our grave after we die and say, oh, well, he did a miracle and he was a good man, so let's make him a saint, you know. And then people would carry my picture on their neck, you know, Saint Thomas, you know. Yeah. You know, we, we are saints because of the decree of God. And uh, because this is this special time for relationships and for marriages, so I thought... We could make it interesting today, and uh, uh, we we could uh, how to say it? We could honor the best couple in our church. And you know who it is, you know. Uh, so so let's let's you know. Uh, no, to tell you, the best couple in our church is not here today, unfortunately. No, 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 no. no. Let, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Okay, the best couple, okay. So let's ask uh, Christian and Nevena to come here, please. Can you just come here, please? Look at them, how they are matching with the color, you know. They are like, so this is just for you guys. You know, we love you very much. So this is the best couple in our church. You know, you know we love you very much. Okay, but listen. So you may be seated. Or if you want to say something. No. Okay. But, but, then also on the other hand, 
uh, who is the best couple in our church? Well, don't worry, don't worry. I, I'm, I'm not losing, you know, memory. I don't have a... This is not the Alzheimer yet, you know. This is, this, there is a purpose. Who is, who is the best couple in our church? You know, again, the best couple. And yeah, let, let's do it this way, okay? So I'll ask my wife to come here now. And I'll explain later on. So we are the best couple also in our church. Oh, you are electric size feist. Wow, so we also, you know, wow, beautiful. And then, uh, oh, who is another best couple in our church? And you know, yeah, he got, yeah, who is another best couple in our church? You know, it's a Dushan and Ivana, and they are not here. And I'll show you and explain you why. So, Dushan and Ivana, you know, this is, this is you guys, this is you. Uh, maybe he will show up later. So, this is Dushan and Ivana also. But then, because this is the, this is uh, the holiday of those who are in love, not only those who are married, right? So, let's continue. So, I believe there is a, a lot of people who love Jesus, right? So, uh, of course, uh, I would like to ask Caroline, please, to come here. Because we also, you know, we are not forgetting anybody, everybody is included in this Valentine celebration. We are greatly loved, we love you, there is one for you also. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah, wow, God bless you, you know, and, and also, uh, and this is just for ladies, you know, so I don't want to make any guy sad. And also, Elizabethka. Elizabeth Ko. So Elizabeth Ko, this is another girl in our congregation. Mm, we love you very much. So this is about the love, you know. The flower expresses that we love you. And, uh, and basically, I was expecting Anya to come here also. But since she's not here, let's make an exception. So... Vladimir, Vladimir, you know. Yeah, we love you, you know. Yeah, so this is one for you also. Thanks. We love you. Thanks. And the other one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I had for, for ladies only. But since, uh, so you, you got one also. Okay. And uh, now maybe you say, wow, how can we be the best couple? You know, how... How is it that we've been pronounced the best couple or, or the best person in my relationship with God? You know, it's the same. I think, I think they are better than we are, you know. And they think that we are better than them. And then he thinks that he or she is better than them. This is sometimes how we think, you know. Uh, and... We just said that you are the best couple, and we said we are the best couple. And then you think, well, if you would see behind the curtain how it looks in our relationship, maybe you would not say that we are the best couple. Yeah? No. I will say it, because I have, I have a word from God, from the scripture. I have a purpose in what I say. So let's look at it. Now I will... Now I will give you uh, the word of uh, wisdom, how to practically live with the spouse, with your wife, you know. And then, uh, then we will build on it, so don't, don't, don't worry. Ephesians 5.25 yeah. Now, when you are getting married... When you were getting married, I don't know what you were thinking about. You know, I'll tell you what I was thinking about. When I was getting married, I believed, and it was this, I believed I will marry this beautiful, amazing angel, you know. She believed the same about me, probably, you know. And we thought that these two beautiful, sinless beings 
because the love takes care of everything, we'll get married and, and we have it. And then, <laughs> then, the, then what happened? You know, two sinners got married. Two sinners got married. Can you believe it? And you know, I'll tell you a secret. And one of those sinners were bigger than the first one. But I won't tell you which one it was. Now, and, and, and you think, you know, like when two sinners get married, that it's going to be heaven and earth. That's what people think. Two sinners are getting married. And you are telling me it's going to be heaven on earth, right? And you know what? It will. It will. Because we are getting married, not to sin natures, but we have a God in our midst. And that makes all the difference. That's beautiful. This is in every relationship. You know, when you, when you know somebody and he's your friend and, and in the church friendships and in family friendships. And you know, you know that the relationships are not always easy. You know, sometimes it's sparks, you know, and flames, you know, sirens, you know. Why? Why? Because we have two, you know, in, in most of the cases, two old sin natures, sometimes just one old sin nature. When we are in relationship with God, you know, because he doesn't have old sin nature. So it's mathematically like impossible. You take one sinner, you take another sinner, you put them together, and now they give some uh, promises. I promise, I'll, I'll do this, I'll, I'll do dishes all my life. And she promises, and they exchange these promises. And then, the next day, where's the promise? Ah, but listen, this is not the end. This is how it looks in the world. You know, two sinners, they get married, and they think the heaven will come on earth, and it's a disaster. But with the believers, it's a little bit, slightly different. Because two sinners get married, and they think the heaven will come on earth, and there is disaster. Again, it's completely the same. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> no, don't. Uh, it's completely the same. It's exactly the same. But, but there is one little difference which makes it heaven on earth and we will speak about it so ephesians 5 25 you know now i'm speaking to husbands because it says here husbands or even future husbands husbands love your wives wow that's a that's a command from god love your wife it doesn't say love her when she is doing good. Love her when she is like nice behaving. And, and there is no condition. There is love her. But God, do you know? Like God says, I know. Love her. Love her. It's so simple. It's so simple. Love her. <laughs> Isn't it nice, ladies, when I'm preaching to men now? And you can just like enjoy it. And yeah, yeah. And I know what he's supposed to do. You know? Now I'm lay, laying the heavy laden, heavy burden on you and me and us, guys. Love your wife at all cost. What does it mean at all cost? When, when it hurts? You know, what, what if she hurts me? You know the pain? It says you love her. Love her as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Love her to the extent that you will lay down your life for her. Wow. You know, to find such a guy, well, I would marry, no, no, I would not marry him, but in, in a principle, you know, if you find such a guy who can love you the way Christ loves you, marry him. There is one ready, you know, there is another one ready. There's a lot of these who have God in their life. Wow. <laughs> you know, and for us, you know, when we are listening to this man, God help us, right? God help us. 
because it's easy to love your wife when everything goes well, and when the dinner is on, on the table, your favorite one, you know, and there is an extra cake on the top of it, and oh, how we love our wives. It's like heaven on earth. But it says, love her. And you know, what we speak about here, you know the context of this passage. You are not in the church for the first time. And you are a Bible school student. You know, you go deeper. He reveals later on, and I speak about Christ and church. Also relationships in the church. Love one another in the love of Christ. You know, even when, it, when it's not convenient to me. When I get no benefit from it. We, you know, we are good businessmen. You know, we can love this like, business exchange. You know, how much we can get from it. You know, I, I've done a good deal. I love this person. You know how rich he is? <laughs> what about loving the poor in the spirit? The poor in the spirit. The one who doesn't deserve it. The one who is kicking around. Oh, wow. You know, we love her. And then, then he says, love her, so it's loving, as Christ also gave himself for it. So it's giving, loving, giving. And then it says here that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might sanctify or set apart this church and cleanse it and wash it. By the word of God. Washing the church by the word of God. That's why we are having a word and debate and we study because we are being washed by the word of God. You know, you come here with some thoughts and then you get washed, you know, as God speaks to us, you know. This is, this is what we need. And, and in the marriage, washing your wife by the word of God. The word, loving, giving, washing. Is this in our relationship? Are we washing our wives with the word? Is there this word of God in our life? And it doesn't mean that you, know, you have to open the Bible and sit at the table and she's like sitting in front of you and you, you give her a lesson. That is, that's not what I mean. Uh, but you can do it. You can have like studies together. Don't, that's not a good... That's not a bad example. But what I mean more is like having this word of God on our mouth during the daily activities. You know, we wake up, you know, and, and, and we say some word of encouragement. You know, washing by the word. The principles. Oh, you know, the money did not come. What are we going to do? And, he, you know, God is faithful. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrews 13. You know, speaking about the money, that's a promise from God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Speaking about financial situation. You know, having the word, bringing the right thinking, washing. That's beautiful. And that he may present it, Verse 27, to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. You know, God does this for this purpose. You know, he redeemed us and now he's washing us. And this is how he sees us, this is the purpose. We are a glorious church. Is our relationship glorious? You know, the relationship I have with my sinful me, with my sinful wife. Is it glorious or is it a disaster? Because in the natural terms, it can be pretty big disaster at times, but yet it's still glorious. Because we have God, we have the washing, and we, we have this eye of God. You know, not having a spot or wrinkle. How do I see my church? How do I see my relationships in the church? How do I see my wife? 
not having a spot nor wrinkle. You know, they, they put on this, how they do you call it, makeup in the morning, you know. You know, cosmel, you know, cosmetics. The Greek word from the Bible, cosmel, means to put in order. So cosmetics is the word to put it in order. Because sometimes in the morning it's not in order. So you need the cosmetics to put it in order. You know, because the one eye is like here on the other side, so you <laughs> have to put it in order. You know, you draw it there. That's why they have these colors, you know. And they, they fool you. Did you know? They fool you with these paintings. That's why so many ladies are this like art oriented, because they, they know how to do this stuff, you know. They draw on this beautiful face, you know. And there was a beautiful face before anyway. But uh, they do it. And they are maybe afraid if they, if they take off the colors that there would be visible the spot and wrinkle. You know, you have these powders, you know. You know, you have this like, maybe you've seen it. You have a sponge and then you do. <coughs> you know. And you put this like thick layer on you, you know, because you want to cover something. But the loving husband sees no spot, no wrinkle. Isn't it amazing? H honey, what do you think? Is it okay? Can, can, I, can I go out with... Perfect. Perfect. No spot. And you know, yesterday how I was behaving, what do you think about it? Oh, perfect. I don't see it. No spot, no wrinkle. Let's speak God. Let's talk about Jesus. The washing. This is what's important. The washing of the word. The talking and looking by the eye of God. Two sinners meeting, getting together, and thinking the heaven will come on earth. You know, if God is not in it, there will be no heaven. But if God is there, if we bring God in it, it's beautiful. You are beautiful. This church is beautiful. Does it have any spot or wrinkle? And to tell you the truth, it does not. Because we have eyes of God. This church has no spot, no wrinkle. This is perfect work of God. And the relationships God gave us are from Him. And, and when, you, when you study... Uh, the scripture about wedding uh, in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32. God is, uh, Jeremiah 2, 32. God is actually, uh, God is speaking about the judgment here on unfaithful Israel. Okay. And he speaks about the need of repentance for them. But the principle that, that is revealed here about the relationship and marriage, Jeremiah 2.32, can a maid forget her ornaments? You know, maid, uh, young virgin, ornaments, you know, putting on the beauty, meaning significance, where does she belong? You know, you put a ring of your father or of your husband, that's one of the ornaments. Then you are beautified by the diamonds, you know. That's, that's her... Like, where does she belong to? And he is speaking to Israel, like, you know, don't forget where do you belong. And then the part two. And bride her attire. You know, can she bride forget her attire? This word for attire is the Hebrew word, and it means like a ribbon or headband. And speaking to be tied. That's why the ribbon is tied. The headband is woven and tied. So this word means about her tie. Can, can a bride forget about her tie? You know, she is tied to a husband. She is not alone. She has somebody. You know, let's never forget where do we belong. Let's never forget our tie to God. Because we are his bride and we belong to him. And he puts these beautiful ornaments on us. And we are tied to him. We belong to him. We are one with him. Sometimes in the churches when there is a wedding, two people put hands together and they are tied together. 
That's, that's the symbolic of this. You now they are tied together. Now they are one. We are one with God. And it says here, don't forget these things. Don't forget them where you belong, that you belong to me. And, and in, a, in a book of Zechariah, let's turn there. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3. It's easy to find. You know, where do we... F- the one on the left. That's the last one, yeah. Zechariah is the last book in your Bible in, uh, before Malachi in the Old Testament. Zechariah, Malachi, and then Matthew. So, Zechariah, chapter 3. Now, here's a story. Jerusalem is getting back home from Babylonian captivity. Israel, I'm sorry, Israel, the nation of Israel is getting back to Jerusalem from Babylonian captivity. Okay? God speaks to Zechariah and he reveals some things to him. And he says here, Zechariah 3, and he showed me Joshua, Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing on his right hand to resist him. You know, the Hebrew word for Satan, Soton, Sotona, Satan, the same word. Ha, I think it's a Ha Satan. It's like Ha Mashiach, Ha Satan. You know, Satan. So here is Joshua standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing on his right hand to accuse him. And then it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Is not this a brand plucked out of fire? Is not this man something which was saved from fire? He was in a, in a bad situation. And I just saved him out of fire. And now it says, Now Joshua was clothed with the filthy garments and stood before the angel. You know, sometimes our behavior may happen like this. Our garments are filthy, not clean. We have polluted so many things in our relationships in our marriages. And this is how Satan brings the accusation. You know, the Satan, Chasatan, you know, Satan is the accuser. But the angel of the Lord is our advocate. And now we can play a little bit like how this scene could look like a little bit. But then at the end I will reveal even something more to you. You know, the accuser is there and he says, Oh, look at him. Look at the filthy clothing, the garments. It's filthy. Look at her. But there is advocate and he says, No, look at me and my blood. There is redemption. You know, the, the devil or the people from outside, they could bring up your sin. Oh, look what he has done. Look at it. Look what he has done. And you know what God says? Look what I have done. Look at the cross. Look what I have done. Isn't this beautiful? When the devil brings accusation, oh, look what he or she has done. Then God stands there and says, no, look what I have done. It's not about what we do or didn't do. It's all about what he has done. The cross. You know, the devil is bringing condemnation. You know what they deserve? Let's condemn them. Because look, they were not faithful. They were not right. They were like argumentative. They were angry. They were in the flesh. They were led by the... Old sin nature in this marriage. Condemnation is speaking the devil. Accusations. But Romans 8, 1, God says, no condemnation. No condemnation. 
There is no condemnation for the believer. And then, God, then the devil can say, you know what? I wish they go to hell. The Gehenna. The place of torment. And God says, no. They will go to heaven. The place of joy. And then the devil will say, but, but look at them. They are unfaithful. They were promising faithfulness to one another in many things. Is teaching uh, in a, in a, uh, John about the sheep. You know the sh uh, the shepherd speaks his voice. And uh, the sheep, the stranger's voice, they will not follow. Because they know the shepherd's voice. We don't follow this strange voice. We don't follow it. Even in our marriage. You know, we don't follow it. Maybe he was not faithful in this. But you know what? God is faithful. It's not about us in the marriage. It's about him in our marriage. And then... That's why we can say it's heaven on earth. Even it looks like disaster everywhere. Everything is falling apart, you know. But God in it. He is the anchor that we can hold on in the storm. And then the devil can say, but look at them. They are not able to do anything. They are full of promises, excitement, and then they are not able to keep it. They are not even able to walk on water. And God says, you know what, they are not. But I am. I am able to keep it. I am able to promise it. I am able to walk on water. And they, with me, can walk on water also. We saw it with the Peter. When Jesus says, follow me. As long as we follow him, we will be able to even walk on the water. What it means. I mean, without him, you cannot do even the natural but with him, we can do the impossible. For our relationships, for our marriages, remember this. Can you walk on water? No. But with him, with him, we are able to do even that which is impossible. You know, when, when your marriage doesn't look like heaven on earth, when the church doesn't look like heaven on earth, with him... We can do even the impossible. We can walk on water. We can walk right through it. With him we can run through a troop of enemies. We can just break through with him. You know the, the devil will say you are loser. But God say no, 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 no. He is a winner. She is a winner. The devil will say you are, you are like zero. Oh, haven't you read the Hebrews 11? We are hero. We are hero. You know, these thoughts and these accusations and this back and forth can come into our mind. God stands for us. He is the advocate. But now I will show you something which is even better. Because we skipped this, I mean, we read this part, but I did it quick. Because now I want to stress it out. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. Satan was standing at his right hand to resist him. So Satan is standing there to accuse him. Okay, Satan is in the business of accusing. Now we spoke about this. You know, uh, accusing and advocating, accusing and advocating, you know, beautiful pictures. But listen, then it says, verse 2, mark this in your Bible. Mark this in your Bible with a marker. Maybe even pink one, because this is the St. Valentine Day. Pink marker. Mark this. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord has chosen Jerusalem. 
rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of fire? What it means? What it means? When the Satan was there and he wanted to bring these accusations, the Lord said, be quiet. It's done. There is no place for your accusations. It did not even happen what we spoke about. It did not happen that the devil would be accusing and saying, look what he has done. Look what she has done. No, God says, quiet. It's a win case and you are the loser. It's done. Every time the devil brings his accusations, he doesn't, give a, he, he doesn't get a space to bring these accusations. Because it says, no, there is no, no space for you. You be quiet. This is a, a branch plucked out of fire. This is my work and this is my salvation in them. Hey. And then he says, take away the filthy garments from him. Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. New garment. New garment. So this is the case. You know, the devil wants to bring accusations. The devil says that we are filthy. The devil says something about our marriage and the disaster. But the truth is, the loving husband, he loves, he gives, he brings the word of God. And the word of God is, you are without spot, without wrinkle. This is the God's reality. Let's not listen to the other voice. He has to be quieted. No more condemnation. No more accusation. And now you have a heaven on earth. And you know, God says, uh, God says and he promises us that uh, he will come up for us. Uh, he says uh, in John 14 that he goes and prepares a place for us. John 14. In verse 2, 14 two, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And this is the picture of a wedding. You know, what's the wedding? You know, Jesus comes, the, the, the husband, the, the bride man comes for his bride, and he says, I go prepare a place. He builds a house. And then he returns, he marries her, and takes her there to this place. God says to us, I, I espoused you and I will come. You are my bride and I will take you out of this world into heaven. This is why in our marriages and relationships, the husband comes and he takes his wife to his own place. To a new place, the place of, of heaven. Because now he can use the word of God. Now he can wash her with the word of God. This is the heaven. This is the, the picture. The relationship, man and wife, is a picture of God and us, the church. He says, I will take you out of this world soon and we go to heaven. When, when a woman gets married, that's the heaven. Now she is joined, tied to one. Now they are one. And the, what atmosphere is there? Two old sin natures? Well, a little bit while we are on earth, yes. But what do we have? We have this loving, giving, washing by the word of God. And when something happens, I don't even see it, devil, the accuser, try to bring it on. I don't see it. You know what she is for me? Well, you know what I am for her? I am the branch plucked out of fire. And now I have a new cloth. No more dirty clothing. That's why we have washing machines. And we put a blood powder there, the Jesus blood. You know, we are washed white. Devil, the accuser. You don't even get the space to speak out here. You be quiet. And we had the message about this, how God muzzled the storm, the devil's accusations. You know, and we see this in John 10, stoning of this adulterous woman. You know what God said? 
be quiet. You know, guys, you know what? You want to stone her. You know what? Be quiet. Just leave. Just leave. She's mine. I see her differently. I don't see her as you do. I have God's viewpoint. I have washing. I have a building up. I have another word. This is my word. I love. I give. I lay down my life. And I see no spot. No wrinkle. It's perfect. It's perfect. Devil, we won't listen to you. The stranger's voice, we won't listen. You know, we had this uh, verse above our door. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, like nice picture. But there's the principle. This is what's hovering above our houses and relationships. As for me and my house and my relationships, you know, we will serve the Lord. We will not listen to you, devil, Satan. You have, you have no word here. Because we are different. We have heaven on earth. You know, he, he would like to pollute it. Accusations, the fiery darts, you know, put on the shield of faith to withstand the fiery darts, you know, the accusations. Now, I believe God. I believe it will be good. I believe we have a hope, we have a power. And though the situation looks impossible, when God says, follow me, Peter, step on water. With me, you can do the impossible. Amazing. This is the marriage. This is the relationships God has built us for and he has given us. This is what he wants for us. And one day, he comes for us. One day he will come and he will say, let's go. Let's go and we fly away. You know, we leave everything behind. And, you know, I, I cannot imagine the feeling. You know, the young woman, you know, getting all dressed, you know, and, and then the husband comes and she leaves the home. Goodbye, mama. I have, you know, we will leave this earth. We will leave this earth. God will take us. But before it happens, we have this heaven in our marriage. So one old sin nature with another old sin nature does not really produce heaven. They produce hell on earth sometimes. You know? But one old sin nature with another old sin nature and with God in their midst, that's heaven on earth. Is it going to be without spot and wrinkle? It will because we have decided so. We have decided so. And we will build it by speaking the truth from God. Accuser, the devil, you keep quiet. You keep quiet because I am the Lord of this house. And I am setting up the spirit in this house. Because of love of God, we will speak the truth. This is what we do. This is, this is how to have heaven in our relationships, not the marriages only, but, you know, all the relationships. God, God's viewpoint, perfect, washing, building up. This is what God has intended for us, for our marriages. So when somebody asks me next time, I'm like, how is your marriage? How are you doing? You oh, know, like, you know. no, it's like, you know, wow, it's a privilege. It's amazing. We speak the truth from the word of God. God is there and we can walk on water because we follow him. Remember this, with God, we can do even the impossible. It's possible. So, this is our God, amazing God. The devil was not allowed to raise any accusations. You know, we are God's elect we are his. Let's remember the ribbon. We are tied to him. You know, we are tied. And the ribbon is this uh, uh, scarlet thread. You know, we are redeemed by the blood. We are tied to him by the scarlet thread. Like uh, in Jericho, Rahab, you know, she was tied to him. And he said, you are mine. You are mine. So God bless you. And you know who, who is the best couple? You know, in, in, in our church, who is the best couple? 
And then you're like, you already said it, it's us. And then the others say, no, it's us. No, it's us. You know, it's all of us. It's all of us because we have best God in our midst. You know, having God in our midst makes it the best. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.